what what petition is that? Yep. So somebody petitioned the British government. Uh, it, actually, it's the UK government. It's on their UK government and Parliament petitions page. Okay. It reads, "Petition prevent Donald Trump from making a state visit to the United Kingdom. Donald Trump should be allowed to enter the UK in his capacity as head of the US government, but he should not be invited to make an official state visit because it would cause embarrassment to Her Majesty the Queen. More details. Donald Trump's well-documented misogyny and vulgarity disqualifies him from being re received by Her Majesty the Queen or Prince of Wales. Therefore, during the term of his presidency, Donald Trump should not be invited to the UK, uh, the United Kingdom, for an official state visit. So, uh, yeah, I got half a million signatures in a day. Yeah, I saw that, and I was uh, right about to sign it when I noticed that it was for UK citizens. <laughs> yeah. And I'm uh, not. So. Or, yeah, or a resident, yeah. I could go over there. You could go on, go on holiday, sign the petition while you're staying at the um, whatever lodge, like the, the days in. I don't have days in there. What do they call them? I can't remember. Well, I, 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 just, go to, I just go to bed and breakfast in uh, Edinburgh. There you go. And log in on the Wi-Fi. Edinburgh. Edinburgh. <laughs> sorry. Edinburgh. Yeah. Edinburgh. Yeah. <laughs> because Edinburgh is not important. The borough is important. Yeah, yes. The Richard, the, the Richard Spencer uh, business even aside from the uh, quite satisfying uh, punches um, to his head, uh, which I have mixed feelings about. Um, I think lots of us have mixed feelings about that. It's yeah. Like, and um, hitting's wrong, but I'm not. Mm, hitting hitting, hitting Nazi, is wrong. That's it. Like, that's as far as, yeah, hitting is wrong. I'll go there. <laughs> that's. I will, I will go just the next bit, which is uh, hitting Nazis is problematic. <laughs> <laughs> right. uh, I don't want to go uh, all the way either way. But yeah. Mole, uh, the, the, the White, La White, House, White, House, White House, White House, I like that. I'm going to use it. The White House leaker um, have the, uh, the Ministry of Propaganda under Conway and Spicer whoever replaces Spicer because of his bad suits, um, uh, uh, So yeah, whatever little bit of activism you can do, more is always better, but there is always more to be done. So at some point you gotta like go, no, this is all I can do. <laughs> so that don't feel like you have to do everything. That's the other thing is don't burn out because four years is a long time. So you have to pace yourself. And that's the other thing too about this. I know it's like standing behind a manure spreader right now. President Trump is the manure spreader and the American people are the field. And he's just spraying us <laughs> down with stuff. Um, but I think we need to up our game and just sort of start to expect, you know, what is it? What are, like you're saying, you know, what are the themes? What's Bannon trying to do with this? Trying to see the larger picture, trying to connect things up. Um, because I think it's going to be sink or swim for the next four years. And on that happy note, <laughs> you guys. Uh... These, these are going to be strange times. That's all I can say. Yeah. yeah. On the other, on, uh, okay, screw it. On the upside, my son just got his very first brand new car. His very first car, actually. Ooh. He, um, he got a, uh, he, he got a uh, 19, 19, God, I'm old, 2017. Um, Subaru Impreza. There's a quote by Bertrand Russell that I'm reminded of constantly as I go through life, which is something along the lines of uh, a stupid man's report of what a clever man says can never be trusted because he unconsciously translates what he hears into something he can understand. And that's what seems to be happening with Trump. And the thing yeah. is, a poor excuse to begin with, because at least most people who aren't clever, you can still explain things to them in a way that they will understand and be able to process. He cannot process information. Right. If this is how Trump processes information from his intelligence briefings, then he is a extremely bad one-stage game of telephone. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. His uranium comments during like the press rally, 
to me it like seemed like somebody had written him a book called U is for Uranium, P is for Plutonium, and he fell asleep halfway through. <laughs> I think that's what it sounded like. Yeah. Uranium is this thing called nuclear weapons. What? Holy fuck. Who says that? I, I mean... A nuclear holocaust like no other. A stupid man's report of what a clever man says. <laughs> <laughs> well, and the thing is, actually, Larry's, um, I thought, even better burn was when Milo said, oh, yes, there are people on the far left who hate me and people on the far right who hate me. And Larry, his rejoinder was, I think you're leaving out a lot of people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that was actually better than the go fuck yourself, I found. Yeah, that was good. <laughs> well, that's because Larry Wilmore is a smart man. <laughs> yes. Yes. And keeping it 100. Because it just shows they don't understand what an argument is. They don't understand the idea of actually crafting an argument. Like, what would it take to craft an argument? And it's, it's funny because, again, it's just like, you know, walking, watching George W. Bush try to open the door and it was wrong and he made that doopy, you know, derp face. Um, but it's also sad that they just, they think they're so clever and they're not. And, you know, they don't understand what an argument is. So maybe I'll do a, um, what a robust, you know, I've already have a video called How to Craft an Argument, but clearly they, none of them have watched it. No, no, um, anyway. Yeah. How to Craft a Robust Feminist Argument. Yeah, now I'll have to, yeah, do it again. And basically, I should just re-upload the exact same video. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to do that and see what happens to the comments. And then just like uh, sort of put a little feminist occasionally. Feminist. Just you know, change the audio up a little bit. Um, yeah. yeah. Please, okay. <laughs> see what happens. I want to see the comment section. Because this is the type of little experimentation I can get behind. So that's depressing. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, on David. A, uh, on, on, a, on a more smiley note sort of Trump related uh, my my dad today this was telling me that he had watched the meme about the professor who was interrupted by his kid and his wife his kids and his wife oh yeah and but where they had put Sean Spicer's face on the professor and Trump and the <laughs> girl, and she walks into the room and um, on the wife's face was Kellyanne Conway and the baby was Ben Carson so yeah even my dad was like watching memes um, because like they were on television apparently so yeah, <laughs> yeah and there was good comedy the, and wasn't there a uh, I also saw I think it was probably a British uh, send up of this or can you hear me yeah, hello you yeah. were kind of breaking up for a second there but you're back again okay I because things changed all of a sudden, and I can see myself now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it it said you unmuted me, and then my my camera came on, and I don't know what's going yeah, on. You're cracking a beer or something. <laughs> you're cracking a I don't, old Milwaukee or something. <laughs> <laughs> I don't drink, but if I drink, I think I'd be. Oh yeah, yeah. I'd be more. Uh, uh, no, I wouldn't. I'd have a PBR. <laughs> I was trying I'm to grasp for like what's a you know, what's the most common kind of like yeah beer you could like you know in Plover, Wisconsin. And I reached for Old Milwaukee, but you're right, PBR me ASAP is probably more that's, culturally relevant. That's uh, that's what I drank when I uh, first started drinking beer um, as an 18 year old. It was uh, I I like it. I don't you know what can I say? And now I can't remember what I was talking about. I'm currently oh, working yeah, my way through a bottle of innocent gun, so just to you know, sort of throw my hat in the ring for the beer conversation. Oh, what was that again? Sorry, David. Uh, I'm drinking a bottle one? of. It's a, a Scottish brewery. There um, we go. It's, oh. it's a oak aged beer, and it's delicious. Mm. Yeah, I'm. I was, of course, when I compare American beers and and British beers, I'm reminded of that classic line from Monty Python at the Hollywood Bowl playing the two Australians who were talking, asking one of them, Bruce asked the other one, Bruce, how is American beer like making love in a canoe? It's uh, fucking close to water. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Okay. There, there are a lot of ways you could go. Actually, uh, I remember when I was 17, I, I spent a summer in uh, Austria, and, and I, I think I mentioned this in a German language school, and uh, we 
were uh, strictly told we could not drink, so we did, of course. And there's a beer, I don't know if it, I think the name of the beer was Schlesser, 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 uh, that I really liked. And when I got back, I tried several other, several beers here, and PBR was the one I, was closest to what I remembered. So that's where I, 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 I thought there was a certain cachet to PBR, aside from being an American beer, uh, right. well, Wisconsin my, beer. My dad uh, visits me about every other year, and the first year here, he started to uh, partake of the local um, brew that we have, Kölsch, and other German beers too, and other European beers. And he said by the end of his trip, he's like, I'm going to have to start drinking Heineken when I go back to Wisconsin because I'm I can't go back to the American beers right away. I've got to like make a transition from yeah. European to American. I used yeah. to work at the University of Leicester in the um, in the sort of admin one of the admin departments. A culture for sort of lunchtime drinking in the student union bar for the admin staff, and I found. It was safer as far as continuing to work effectively during the afternoon if I if I um, drank Budweiser instead of any of the <laughs> British or European beers that were on offer. Yeah, instead of beer, you had Budweiser. <laughs> oh, this is so much more enjoyable than talking about Trump. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There, there was just a swerve point back there that we kind of missed, but it's probably just as well. But I was just going to go from the beer conversation to Paul <laughs> Ryan with his pint. Oh, to, yes, please do. And, oh, then, oh, oh, oh. and then from the pint of Guinness to um, the Irish Prime Minister giving Donald Trump basically a lecture about immigration, yeah. which <laughs> I thought was nice. He had a really bad St. Patrick's Day. He got oh. by the Irish Prime Minister and then Merkel gave him that, are you talking to me? Look. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, um, I think the biggest irony is that for someone who's that, that an MRA channel has more viewership from feminists than any other group in um, YouTube, and probably like some of it's to do with the social affiliations because I'm very good friends with the the anarchist part of feminist, which I didn't, I never thought I'd see myself in that circle, but they kind of took me under my wing and they're trying to turn me into a. Um, I don't want to get arrested. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, scared, I'm scared. <laughs> like I'm not, I don't want to throw bricks. So I'm going to lose my teaching life. Um, speaking of this, this carousel of time, I'm glad I'm on, on it here <laughs> because the the surgeries that I've had for my eyes and my shoulder and all that kind of stuff uh, were either not available, you know, a few uh, two decades ago, or were major major surgeries with a lot of a lot of potential for fucking up big time. And now it's, uh, you know, it's day surgery. You go in, you, you know, spend a couple, you know, 20 minutes under the knife. You come out and uh, go home and heal up. That's amazing. So, uh, mm -hmm. Tom, just out of curiosity, I was wondering, because I'm hearing some background from you. If you could check your settings to see if you're on communications or on your preferred mic, just because uh, we're getting a little bit of feedback. But we're still hearing you loud and clear. Just if we could okay, hear you better, that'd be great. Which, uh, yeah, in the, in the settings uh, bar, there's the um, the one with the the tool thingy. You can check which microphone you're using. I think we okay. maybe had this problem, but just make sure it's not on communication. So that's the bad one. I'll edit this bit out. Uh, <laughs> and there's uh, there's always at least one table of guys mm -hmm. sitting and bullshitting and um, not really caring a lot about how loud they are. Or, who hears what they have to say? Um, so yeah, that's absolutely that's absolutely the case. And you talk about we, they and they will and they will often be not often, but sometimes they'll be talking about how women gossip. You know, you know, oh, my wife the other day, you should hear she had this oh. gossip. And let me tell <laughs> These you, guys going, yeah. Oh, absolutely. If they, yes, yes. I mean, you should see. I mean, um, like when I hang out. Because I sometimes do live streams with the um, it's Ross, he's the American anarchist and the vegan anarchist, and the whole the whole crew, and it just it because it's usually a milestone. So someone's had their you know hundredth subscriber, or it's a birthday or whatever, and 
and yeah, it does. It it is very we become very gossipy. Um, like I'm still trying to figure out how they, how I became sort of in their um, circle of friends. I don't. I think it was because we met through the the Russian Deadpool from the Skeptic Feminist, and then I'd met um the and we had a few things in common, like I, I guess a similar sense of humor. I think, and so when we go on live show, it is very gossipy and. I mean, imagine what a, um, a men's like um, like knitting circle would look like, which I think should be a thing. I think that would be a brilliant. I wish, I wish, I'd love to see those kind of things happen. Because I, I mean, at the moment, I'm just a solitary little um, like crochet enthusiast. But I think I'd love to have those like um, over. I mean, imagine what men would be the have gossipy we'd get if we had the um. Because in Australia, we call it the Stitch and Bitch Club. If you yeah, get yeah, together, Stitch and Bitch. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> stitch and bitch. Yeah, yeah. Like it's like um, I'm trying to say, all right, so Tim, um, you know, Kevin, um, you know, it's easy, like just learn to do some things and then you can join Chrissyosity because she's she's also a very good proficient. So we'll have like we'll have the stitch and bitch stream. <laughs> <laughs> well, do it, like a live stream. Oh god. Yeah, I can do scarfs, that's it. As long as it's just row after row after row. I can't and that's as long as as long as you can do a hobby craft, that's fine. We <laughs> yeah, that's can get, like YouTubers getting together, <laughs> and we'll have just a massive like stitch. We can have a <laughs> stitch and bitch stream. <laughs> I like that idea. We'll have to organize it. Although I tend to knit more in the winter months because it's just for me it's like a winter activity because I need this, the scarf. But oh, we can do it uh, in the autumn yeah. leading up to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I did it in the summer actually because I knew that I was going to run out of time because it's like by the time I finish something. It ends up getting to the stage where um, <clears throat> it's already warm again. So I think, okay, well, I'm going to have to like put this thing away. So I started in like the middle of summer. <laughs> and so now it's like um, I'm starting to get cold and now it's like timing is perfect. And I remember when my grandmother, after my grandfather died, she lived alone for uh, quite a long time, but then eventually her health was just a little too sketchy. So she moved into an assisted living center where she had her own place, but there were people on site in case there were any problems. And she lived like you know, about a five minute walk away from the senior center. And we would go to visit her and she'd be on her own. And, you know, I once asked her, I'm like, Grandma, you're just indoors all day. Why don't you go over to the senior center and, you know, do things over there? She's like, that's for old people. Wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> I would have said I wasn't sunbathing on the Lido deck and, and that cruise. Um, but yeah, I think another one I would probably be more likely to be uh, near the pool or just on it, just um, being at sea um, in that way. But you must, you can get maybe bored of sitting around and then there's shuffleboard and eating and gambling and bingo. So there you go. Yeah, not the not the bingo that gets played on the internet in, in certain, we won't mention that type of thing. This is the real. This is one with numbers. <laughs> this is yeah. A, yeah. <laughs> I don't think that has any bearing on the current situation. <laughs> current discussion. <laughs> but, um, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's the quick guess. Very, very droll. Very droll. <laughs> um, yeah, I think the um, uh, what is it, Tim? I think that was the uh, um, it was probably the funniest video. The the wedding video was fantastic. Just the um. <laughs> He turned it into this creepy um, kind oh, of um, yeah. like an abstract work of art. It's um, and some people took it literally, saying, "Oh, he's so paranoid about the um, about exposing their guests," but they don't realize it was a satire. That's exactly what it was. It was a hyperbole or a satire yes. on the idea of people being paranoid about identities and all these figures that came about and. Um, they did the full frontal scene, and the way they set it up, it was obvious. The whole thing was like, Sherlock's totally turned on now. She's never seen a naked woman before. <laughs> what does he do here? Does he go and he touch the butt? Does Sherlock touch the butt? He can't even Sherlock like read what. Uses... Go Sherlock ahead, Matthew. Seven... Sherlock uses a seven percent solution. He's touched women before. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I haven't seen the, I haven't seen any of this. I've seen like the first two episodes, as I said, so I feel a little bit of a fraud. Uh, but just the meta commentary, maybe. It sounds like Irene Adler was uh, was the one really strong, clever uh, person who 
woman at least who would who really matched Sherlock and maybe beat him and was powerful and so and, and now in this uh, this Moffat uh, rendition her power is being a dominatrix and being naked <laughs> Yeah, this, this had this had you know I hate to sound like a feminine. No, wait a minute, no, I don't. It almost it almost sounds like he doesn't like her. Hmm. You know, like like somehow uh, he has to do something to make her less less. Oh, sorry, what was that Tom? Uh, I, I've been listening uh, again, uh, listening and thinking about what you're saying, and I wonder if it's the different incentives between uh, making sh movies or shows in uh, England. Uh, or so, I'm sorry, Great Britain, the UK, whichever the fuck you want me to call you guys, <laughs> or Australia. Uh, um, is the way things are going? It could just be England and Scotland, you know, separate. But anyway, uh, and England so, only has itself to blame. That's what he. Uh, but it seems so it's a you bet. Um, was like a uh, anyway. Ah, fuck! I'll get there. Um, it seems like in America or in, in in Britain, what you got is money to make a show, to tell a story. And then it's uh, you're you're pretty sure it's over. Uh, maybe if it's really good, it'll go on. But maybe it's you know. But you can't really plan on that. In in this country, what you've got is a show that you want to milk for all the money you can get, and all the and the actors have an incentive to want to be on that show. They want to make a friends. They want to make an NCIS. Uh, they want to make Law and Order and, and Law and Order Special Victims Union, Law and Order Los Angeles, and Law and Order wherever the fuck. Criminal and, intent, and yeah, go ahead. <laughs> you know, yeah, and and it seems well, you know, and, and that's my thinking. I'm wondering if it makes any sense uh, to people from across the pond or the bigger pond uh, to the other side. You, uh, you. Antipodian freezing people. I'll defer to Xander on uh, how, yeah, programming, unless you want me to make give my cross-cultural comparison, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but when, when affecting it to like last for four or five or six years, there's usually like broad church, it comes out, it's on for a bit. Um, English TV shows tend to have the very short but sweet leaving you wanting more sort of thing. They'll give you like three episodes, four episodes, then they're gone for like I was gonna, years, I was gonna like two say years. a bit like British men. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, I just, uh, the only four episodes. Oh my god, are they amazing? Yeah. British friends. I never heard of this. I mustn't. I must look at this. Look up this up now. Eventually, after the call. British men. My apologies. Like short and sweet and wanting more. Mm -hmm. Oh boy. <laughs> um. <laughs> but yeah, you know, you get commissioned. <laughs> so I'm in. Well. Maybe it's an entertainment issue. I don't have that much stress in my life. I don't have like, a, I don't have financial problems. I mean, I'm basically, you know, getting by. Nobody in my family has major health issues. I don't have health issues. And so I go into some like darker areas and take, um, go on emotional rides <clears throat> that aren't happening in my life. So when I go to television, I go into escapism to sort of explore different ideas. And so for me, the things I look, and this is what I'm asking you guys, is what do you look for in something that you enjoy in terms of when you watch it? Um, yeah, I want, I wouldn't want, I want to fall into a story where I don't want a lot of setup. I want to jump in right in the middle of the story and have to figure out what's going on. You know, like I want some clues as to what it is, but I don't want, well, John, you're my brother and you've been my brother since you were born 27 years ago. I don't want that kind of stuff, you know, just like get me right in the middle of the story, get me a little confused, get me caught up with it, and then give me a chance to get to know the character. 
as it's been said before, I love watching trash. <laughs> I just love Good like track. anime TV shows. It doesn't matter. I just like watching stuff that just you just don't have to take seriously. So I can just sit back and enjoy whatever the hell is just going on on the screen. It anime just, is good like that. Yeah, yeah. It's it a just, pulpy media. Yeah, it doesn't doesn't like as long as it doesn't take itself seriously and knows mm -hmm. it's just oh goofy. Oh, we know. Let's just have some fun. Then I'll just watch that for days. Same here. That's what yeah. me and my brothers do. If we watch a different anime each night, or we watch a full series, four episodes at a time each night, but each one of us choose a different series. So, mm -hmm. yeah. We just watch one of a dragon maid. It sounds like something where the writer's just like, dragon, maid, <laughs> no way. Okay, let's see what can we what we can do with that. But it was actually good because it had characters. Mm, like I don't mind Star Trek style techno battle because you're talking about theoretical stuff that doesn't exist. But when you're writing a story that happens c contemporary to us right now, and they do techno babble, it's just like you're just talking shit. That's not how you solve crimes. <laughs> Oh my god, I get like that with the forensic technology. I've done a lot of reading and studying on that, like the crime scene stuff. And when they go in, it's like, we got DNA from the air, more or less. And now we know that this guy is like six foot tall and has green eyes, and we can fight. I you have know? a friend who is an actual forensics person. She works for the army. And yeah, she she can't watch those shows just because they're so bad at that. My mother is an ER nurse. She can't watch shows like ER in Chicago Hope because she sees just how wrong everything in it is. And I, I know she's watched like the first season of ER and every episode she was like, that's not how you do that. That's not how you do that. That's not how you do that. <laughs> like, they should just hire me as their technical consultant because they're so wrong. Can I add one um, thing? Is chat interesting? Can I yes, add one of course. thing? Um, just as we leave, and we're talking about um, the uh, the brains behind Sherlock and how shit that was. <laughs> um, Moffat, yeah. Moffat and Gaddis, Moffat and Gaddis apparently have um, are, are going to do uh, Dracula, the series. Yes, they've been given Bram Stoker's Dracula. God, so, God. Yeah, yeah. So go, go, go for it and feel really shit about that. Exactly. There's another, you know, like icon Ben Moffat will somehow. But I was, I was actually thinking that maybe with Dracula, this would be a good fit because the story is all about Dracula. Well, I mean, because the story is like about Mia and all that stuff, but really, it's about Dracula. So maybe this is a case where his egoism. And his obsession with having the Ubermensch as his main character will will play into. And also, I'm planning on tweeting them um, H Bomber Guy's video review until they either acknowledge it or block me. <laughs> uh, they do need to see that. Need to watch that that video. So, thanks, Tom. As long as, the, as long as the vampires don't glitter in the sun. No, vampires, <laughs> I can believe vampires sparkling in the sun about 0 0.2 seconds before they explode. Yeah. Cool movie that had its first female lead, right? Wonder Woman was a DC movie, but they've been making, okay, Catwoman was, you know, we'll just try to all forget Catwoman. <laughs> I think it's the best. Uh, she was very straightforward in what she needed to do, and... She just was the type of person, okay, I need to get there. Um, are you going to help me? Yes or no? If you don't, well, bye. And she wasn't uh, hung up about the um, American dude who was played by Captain Kirk. <laughs> and I think the favorite scene in the whole movie for me was the whole thing, men aren't necessary for pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 the whole theater broke down laughing at that point. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. Yeah. Does anyone like, want to re react to that? Uh, I, I mean, I, yeah, good. 
Uh, yeah, my younger brother, the Gamer Gator, uh, he mentioned something about that. It wasn't the fact that it was like for women's only. It's it's a stupid point, but it's but oh, someone could just say that they're women and get into those screenings and stuff like that. And that's yeah, that started a conversation. And yes, yes, please, everyone assume the face palm position. This is where I realized that my brother was. Well, I always knew he was listening to like Sargons and those those other people, and I. He brought up Jordan Peterson and like how his plight of like that, and even from his retelling of what Jordan Peterson was trying to do, I was thinking Jordan Peterson's ass. Jordan Peterson is an asshole. So that's my only comment on this. It, it's a bunch of stupidity with stupid reasons of the women's night out outrage. I agree. I mean, it's it's a way to get clicks, isn't it? Um, that's that's it. You know, you're right. If this was some sort of rom com. And they had had a women's only, you know, like screening at seven and nine on a Tuesday night or whatever it was. Nobody would pay attention. But, you know, because of the whole superhero genre thing and what happened with Ghostbusters, I think they were looking for reasons to be offended. Uh, whether that's why I can't, what about the men's? Or this idea that, yeah, someone could walk up and just say that they're a woman. I'm like, theory. But, and honest, oh, honestly, how many people are actually going to do that? I mean, you're either doing it because it's true, in which case you should be in the cinema, or you're doing it because it's not true and you're trying to be a dick, in which case you should get outside and play more. <laughs> little to do with your life. If that's what you're doing, unless, of course, you're trying to get clicks for a YouTube video saying, oh, I tried to get into this women's only screen as a woman for today. Yeah. Then you're just showing it. Uh -huh. Anyone else on that point? Yeah. You as I, ah, hello. As I understand it, it was only one screening, um, uh, and it was, it, it, if nothing else, I mean, I think it was a good thing to have, you know, uh, a place for women who might otherwise feel a little bit odd about going to a superhero movie alone might be able to go and feel comfortable there. Um, but it was one screening. I think it. Uh, it, it look at it. Gen look at what it generated. People in Australia know about it. I. It, it, it was to generate buzz. It was to generate business for the for the Alamo. Uh, what was it? Alamo Steakhouse. Alamo whatever something house. And it did. I remember the name of the of the most of the name of the uh, of the theater. Uh, just, just in terms of marketing, it was brilliant, uh, and I don't think it really harmed them at all. I'm, I'm sure that uh, uh, the uh, the M M Meninist MRA uh, M MGTOW boycott uh, brought more people to that theater than uh, than they lost in the uh, in the whiny, you know, whiny white boy. Uh, demographic. I think it was supposed to be just like one showing at one location at the Alamo, but because of the outrage added, they thought, wow, people are talking about it. And so they did it for all the branches where all the branches across the country had like their own version of a women's night out. So yeah, it just, it, the outrage just worked for them and just caused, uh, caused more promotion for their theaters. Even better than I thought it was. Yeah. Price and effect at work. <laughs> yeah, or the Sarkeesian effect. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> of heroin. Yes, yes. There, we shouldn't uh, we we shouldn't talk about these like stupid MGTOWs or anything like that. Yeah. They're winning this con. They're winning the battle. We've been talking about when we're supposed to be talking about heroines. Go ahead, Christy. <laughs> yeah. So um, I don't know much about um why the uh, is it the sorry the ghost in the machine that was the um was earlier. Ghost in the Shell. Ghost in the Shell, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Ghost in the Machine is something else. I can't remember, yes. but it shows you how little I know. And another show I really like is the whole um, lyrical Nanoha thing. It's... <clears throat> well, imagine a Gundam series is if the Gundams were little girls. <laughs> 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 Yeah, 
it's it's true. <laughs> And anime yeah. is weird. Just if you d take nothing else from this, anime is weird. Oh yes. <laughs> but that's why I love it too. Yeah. And in the Lurk Nano Hovers, most of the characters are women, with perhaps one or two male characters per season. So it's it's a really good show. <laughs> But obviously it's not. I'm, I'm a bit tongue-tied tonight. Like, I'm not speaking as well as I should be. <laughs> don't Before worry, I'm hungover. That's don't right. worry, I'm hungover. It's still a little hungover from last night. It was my birthday party last night, so that's why. <laughs> yes, happy birthday. Thank you. I'm now 33. Today is my birthday, so, hey, since I'm yes. not going where I don't drive, I got mead with me. Black bear mead, <laughs> so I'm going to be drinking a little bit. And I've, I've, I was drinking during the hangout, if you haven't noticed. So, <laughs> there you go. Happy birthday to you. We would sing happy birthday, but I think with all the legs, it would sound absolutely disgusting. So, <laughs> we're just going to skip that. You can just like type in the chat and that'll be fine. Yes. It, the whole yeah. thing, not criticizing, reminds me a lot of the uh, scene in the life of Brian where all they're shouting out, Split us! <laughs> yes, the Judean People's Front, too, the popular front of, for people, popular front of Judea. Split. No, we should fight for the same enemy, the G People's Front of Judea? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and as a Wisconsin person, I'm you know, a Packer fan. Woohoo, go Pack! Oddly enough. I wore that for you, uh, Steve, because I know you're a Packer fan, too. <laughs> I'm so, I love football so much. Yes. And I'm wearing my Seahawks hats, and you and Packers and my Seahawks will be at war. Wow. Yeah, yeah, we've got to beat somebody. We might as well beat you. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's the thing, you know. Tom's got all the great zingers. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a, I'm, I'm totally unreconstructed uh, Wisconsin chauvin, chauvinist. Uh, yes, I, we, I don't, we are the I don't best. Care. I don't care. I'm a, you know, Wisconsin, right or wrong. <laughs> My parents are from Michigan, so like they live close, close. to Wisconsin. Yeah. 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 The UP well, is basically Wisconsin, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. My mom's from the UP. Yeah. Yeah, they stole it from us. So you're basically Wisconsin. Yeah, you're a Uper. <laughs> you are. You're a Uper. I'm a son of a Uper. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I don't know if you can say that in public. Um, <laughs> 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 Too late, I just did. Yeah. All right, well, well it's a content warning. It, yeah, it, I mean, um, it kind of reminds me of uh, what was the show he was on, like Joe Rogan, and yes. it was just like the um, yeah. like it's almost like he had to explain every step of the way, like of all this YouTube drama. Because when you think about it, like this is like a not like when you compare to larger channels like gaming channels or like um good looking people who do like comedy skits or like or dares or whatever like this like someone like saigon's kind of small and so it was almost embarrassing it was like the everything like it was sarkeesy and this sarkeesy and that and you know joe Sorry. rogan was like can you can you please like um explain we, we don't know what you're talking about right nobody cares about <laughs> this yeah you live in a bubble <laughs> Yeah. Well, and Carl living in a bubble is another nice segue <laughs> into <laughs> the other bit because we've got like sixty people in the hangout, and they're obviously here for the sh uh, the Sarden Freuda. So let's let's get that out of the way for them. Uh, right. So the other thing too that happened uh, landed on Friday uh, that Carl is being sued. He is being um, <clears throat> sued in the Southern District Court of Federal Court of Dis Southern. That's a federal court, the Southern District in New York. Um, and he's being accused of basically uploading somebody's video without doing anything to transform it. And I actually talked about this on Steve's channel, on the patron hangout, so I'll give a little plug. I don't want to repeat myself, because um, there's so much crossover, I'm sure thousands of people are flooding over from your channel to mine, Steve. But uh, I did a little summary in your patron, so uh, I'll put a link to that in the description box. You guys can go watch uh, Steve's uh, hangout, and we'll discuss that there. But the gist of it is, um, it, the case does not look good, and it's not just me saying that because I've got some sort of bias against uh, Carl, Monday Matt, in his video on it, even though he says, you know, I'm not a lawyer, but I would tell 
um, Carl to settle because he doesn't think the work was transformative. V, who is another bleep, 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 that um, he was on the Hangout as well, the, the, the Heather Hangout. Um, he also didn't think that Carl had done enough to transform it to really defend it under fair use. So the courts, this, the case against him looks, looks pretty bad. And as a consequence, Carl put up a video where he's brainstorming ideas of how he can make money by moving off of YouTube and connecting with his fans in person and doing what I thought was the most hilarious thing, which is um, he wants to have people pay to travel to see him and then pay to see him. And then what they would do is like a live stream where people would ask him questions and he would give them answers. And then they presumably would pay to go home. And he thinks he can sustain this as as a lifestyle. <laughs> Sorry, I find it hilarious. <laughs> he actually thinks people are going to travel hundreds of miles and pay money to hear him talk shit in a room when they can do it for a lot less on free on YouTube or listen to somebody else do it. It's just like, I, I'm sorry. It's like, <clears throat> and then the best part, in my opinion, is that he kicked around this idea of, you know, doing more stuff collectively and getting their values together and getting their ideas together and creating a manifesto. But of course, he wouldn't write it. He would crowdsource it out to other people to write. He's so lazy. He can't even. <laughs> He can't even write his own values. <laughs> He's got to get other people to come up with ideas so he can steal them and put them in his manifesto so he can talk about them in a Church of Sargon meeting where people meet and talk about alt-light and alt-right ideas, I guess. Wait a minute. He's not, even, he's not even going to come up with the own ideas. He's not even going to at least take the manifesto and have someone else yeah. write it down. He's going to let other people come up with the ideas? Yep. yep. Yeah. We're going to get my ideas out there. What do I think? <laughs> Tell me what I think. <laughs> He's going to be like the executive producer. He's not going to write every yeah, episode. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, well, I know the EDL said that, you know, for now, Sargon is somebody who's, you know, yelling in the wind until he finds a political party where he can land. And so I'm sure that he will feel right at home with the English Defense League if he, he decides he wants to get involved in politics. And it's about as marginal as he is in society. So it's a, it would be a good fit. Did he ever consider just getting a job? <laughs> I mean, because that's what I would have Doing to do. Because that's what I would have to do. Like if my YouTube channel ever dried up, if, if my Patreon ever dried up and I couldn't make videos anymore, like I would, it would suck. I wouldn't want to do it, but I would just have to go out yeah. and get a job. I mean, like that's what you do. And he's got kids. Like the, I, I feel terribly for his family <laughs> just because they have to live in proximity mm -hmm. to him. him. But yeah. I mean, it's like, just go. Cause I think, isn't that one of the things he said in his video? Uh, you know, I have, I, you know, I, I have to take care of my family. I have to make yeah. a living. Go get a job, dude. That's what people do. I mean, if you can get hired anywhere since you decided, you know, yeah. to become a public bigot for, for a living for the last few years. I mean, and if, you, and you know what, if, if he can't get a job because he's Sargon of Akkad and, uh, you know, everybody would find out who he was, well then to hell with him. I don't care anyway. Like, I, I have no sympathy for him, but at least try to go get a job, <laughs> you know? Well, the thing I is, do. Steve, you can write and you well, can yeah. produce things. And he reads other people's articles and then just makes things up off the cuff. So he doesn't actually, like, do, he doesn't have marketable skills. Maybe his voice, if he could get voice work, but then if it was recognized, then it would just tie in the product to him and everything he's done. So there would be boycotts and stuff. So, yeah. yeah. I'm gonna call you. Well, I'm gonna call you out on a lie, Chrissy. I don't think Sargon can read. There's been videos that prove that. <laughs> yes, yes, that's what I want to say. Eric Bomber guy has proven that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Sean has proven that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. They require us to change our lifestyles, and a lot of us are just too lazy to really be inconvenienced. I mean, look at how people freaked out over LED lights versus incandescent bulbs. Mm. Do you remember Freedom Ball? Oh. When Michelle Bachman wanted to, you know, like roll back the laws that had to do with um, making people use energy efficient lights. I mean, if we're gonna have a fight over light bulbs because people have to wait 30 seconds for it to warm up and the it's like, how, how are we gonna survive as a species? Oh, the what? stupidity of humanity. That's all I have to say on that. Embrace science, people! Hey, Xander, you've been awfully quiet. I know a lot of this has been sort of drama and stuff, but uh, can I pick on you and pull you into the conversation? 
sorry, I thought we were going to talk. Um, we were going to shit on uh, both Sargon and um, Stephen Moffat in the same session, and it would have made my week. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we can still do that. <laughs> yeah, there's still time to shit on Moffat. There's always you're always time to shit on Moffat. Yeah, I was going to add, add him in, and I forgot. I'm sorry, Xander. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. No worries. Um, no, just listening to the global warming thing just reminded me that. Um, of uh, all the stuff that's uh, being affected in England as well. We're getting horrific floods. Just horrific. But also, the summers are nicer, which is, you know, a plus. <laughs> so when you paddle out of your front door, you'll have sunshine. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, as soon as I get the, um, you know, those floaty beds, I can just lay back and enjoy <laughs> the world. Yeah. yeah. You'd have to put in air conditioning, though. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Well, wasn't that the premise of uh, one of those uh, disaster movies where the, the thing was the frozen one, where like the top part of North America got frozen, and so there were all these American refugees surging on the Mexican border, trying oh, the to get day, across. Uh, the, uh, the day after tomorrow, or something. The day after tomorrow, yeah. Roland Emmerich. Oh, oh the, that movie. The final <laughs> action scene was like the characters outrunning super cold. Yeah, yeah, it was bad. So bad. That movie was full of stupid. But you know, just just to show how crazy Trump is, we our own military has to take climate change into account when it talks about its plans for the future because they know they're going to deal with trouble because they're going to have combatants that have to leave their country and they're going to have to deal with it. Yet the administration doesn't want to believe it exists. So it's like this balancing act of two opposing ideologies that just don't work together. Mm -hmm. yeah, said, I thought Trump actually listened to Jim. Yeah, when they agree with him. <laughs> yeah, well, he's taking care of the uh, military issue by uh, banning trans folks. Yeah, and he has a, an enormous amount of facts he just pulls out of thin air. <laughs> I would um, say he pulled him some also out of thin air. Yeah, they come from somewhere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, content warning again. Jesus. It's going to be fun. No, I, I thought she meant they come from InfoWars. <laughs> oh, yeah. Same. Because that's who uh, Joe Arpaio no. thanked Alex Jones and linked it to InfoWars. At least that's yeah. what I saw on the internet, so it must be true. But um, no, I mean, Trump, uh, I'm really, um, I find myself experiencing lots of things that I can only call anti royalist re reactions. Like when I see um, some, some secretary's wife coming off of a, tr a, a plane with her shopping and talking down to ordinary Americans or the fact that he's bankrupting the Secret Service and um, that he's, you know, basically using the presidency to enrich himself. And I'm like, this is why we got rid of kings. This is why we got rid of kings. And, you know, the whole complaint that Parliament used to have a lot of times will always, you know, in the Tudor times, the king is spending too much, the king is spending too much. And I really relate to those people now historically more than I ever have. Because I don't feel like this is just about a policy difference. He is not administering the office of the presidency in a democratic way. He is acting as totalitarian as he can get away with. And that infuriates me to no end. So. Mm -hmm. Well, temper like he seems to be stuck in the terrible twos or something. Oh, yeah. Because uh, something happens and yeah. he throws a fit like i don't know it's really uh, and he has the attention span to match so uh yeah i think you know at this point i, well, I watch a lot of msnbc because obviously i you know buy into the mainstream liberal media lies and what's yeah, funny yeah. <laughs> you know with joe scarborough i'm retweeting david from and bill crystal and you know occasionally a charlie sykes so clearly i'm you know the, the radical left uh my uncle had when my grandfather died took possession of the uh, old service weapon of my great-grandfather from World War I. It's in no condition to be shot, but he still had to get a license that he is allowed to own the thing. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, the only way you could kill someone with that gun is if you bash the head in with it, but 
Yeah. <laughs> I'm just picturing that scene from Hot Fuzz when uh, the guy's got all the old weapons in, the, in his barn and they start hauling them in down to the police station. So, well, guys. Oh, yeah. Go ahead yeah, and then uh, um, I'll jump in. Yeah. Um, like, oh, yeah, that's right. Australia is one of the one of the very very strict countries when it comes to gun laws. I mean, the only like other countries, it's only for recreational purposes because we do have to because hunting kangaroos like it is an it's kind of a necessary evil because they are very much a pest because they breed mm -hmm. like very very rapid and they cause a lot of damage. <laughs> Oh, okay, that was it. <laughs> I thought you could maybe say a little bit more. So I'm going to try my camera again. Um, so we've been going for an hour, and um, normally, no, my camera sucks again. How much fun is that? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, my baby. Hello. All right. uh, so, yes, I was on this hangout with Steve earlier, so I've been in two hours of hangout. Steve's been on two hours of hangout, so we're going to kind of wrap it up tidily here. But, um, Steve, I, this is how I run my hangouts like a seminar. If, if you've ever taken a class of mine, basically, like how I keep this is how I keep conversations going and manage it. So, thank you for blending right in and, and making contributions and making oh, this really wonderful. enjoyable. It was wonderful to be here. I'm glad you invited me. Mm -hmm. And again, thank you for helping me promote my channel way back in the day. Um, I definitely, the lift was inspirational and, and kept me going. So yeah. thank you. If it was up to me, you'd have way more. <laughs> well, I'll work on yeah. it. I'll work on it. <laughs> All right. Well, then I'll wrap it up. We can have a little off-air chat for the rest of you guys if you want to hang out a little bit longer. I just want to turn the cameras off. But for everybody watching, I hope you enjoyed the Sargon Freuda. Uh, I will put links to Shameless Self-Promotion of my articles, both on him attending the Mythicist Milwaukee Conference and his lawsuit in more detail with the details, another background. I'm such a good, I didn't realize I was an amazing vlogger until I made an article and went, that's actually not that bad. So you can tell me what you think. If you hate me, you'll probably tell me it sucks without reading it, so uh, don't bother. So, uh, Tom, you were also, you tried to contact Mythicist Milwaukee back in August, and they basically said, we're not changing our platform. <laughs> so, do you want to talk uh, a little bit about your reactions and your read of the events uh, from the outside? Shit show. <laughs> that was easy. Um, <laughs> Reflection on why this is an important conversation to have for U.S. atheism going forward. I'll... Uh, Kick it over to some random guy. Thank you, Christy. I am, but first of all, I am some random geek. Hey, I, I am a big geek, and I'll prove yes, that with my yes, geek. This is it. It's too, it, it kind of fades out. So thank you for correcting me, geek. You're it's geek. Okay. You geek. Geek. <laughs> is I have my Tiger <laughs> Bunny glass like here that has a alcoholic beverage because. The, like the like what the Bronx Bombers said on your postmodern hangout. If you're going to talk about politics, might as well get a little drunk. A little. Mm. So anyway, Mythicist Milwaukee, my thoughts on this. Thoughts on Sargon. Uh, what more to add? It is a shit show. At least a Mrs. Milwaukee finally had a line. The line is child pornography or advocates for child pornography or pedophilia, which is the same reason that Milo Leonopoulos got kicked out of the right and got yep. fall from grace and stuff like that. So it's like, okay, so you're, so they say we're not okay with child pornography or pedophilia, but we're all okay with racism, sexism, and misogyny. It's like, so what, you're okay with all those other things? And that's um, I listened to the um, uh, the the scientists. <clears throat> sorry, the science the, fuck the science enthusiast podcast. Uh, I'm I, sorry, I just love Tom saying fuck on air. <laughs> that is funny to me too. I, why why is that? I don't because know because no no no. It was just how you did it. You're like uh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Tom. You, you sound like me when I look for my world. So you have been looking for too many of my videos. <laughs> it's it's your fault. Okay. It, it's your it's your so, fault. Yeah. Okay, everybody, ears perked up because I'm gonna say it again. I said fuck it because I was not gonna listen to these assholes. <laughs> Uh, unskeptical and is interested in drama and uh, and bringing in the filth of the uh, alt right and all right alt right as these people are. 
and I just uh, did I mention sh show before? I think that I think I might have. <laughs> you did mention yeah. show, yes. <laughs> yeah. And see, I'm just I'm just sweary as anything today. <laughs> I'm, gosh darn it! I am so I am so flipping angry. <laughs> yeah, I, I okay. you know <laughs> the. Um, I, I may swear again. I don't know if I get if I get uh, you know really peeved or pedoed. Uh, I I can well I can tell you what I saw and and basically it was it was Sargon was and the uh, the video by the way is is filmed sideways. So you know you either break your neck or you just get used to uh, being disoriented watching the fucker. See, so it did it again. And the uh, what was going on was the, uh, the oh man <laughs> if, if I keep if I keep doing this I'm going to be emptying out that swear jar I'm, if I, you take out a dollar every time you swear isn't that it yeah yeah that's how it works that's how it works. okay all right so I'm going to have I'm going to have pin money uh, for a month <laughs> after this one uh, but Christy uh, brings up something I hadn't thought of but you're absolutely right. Thomas was in a hell of a position, and he, uh, and this is one one more big big fail on the part of uh, the uh, mythicist Milwaukee assholes. Does asshole count? I'm uh, not sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah you get a dollar uh, for that too. You actually, you actually can't say asshole on like a radio or a television because it's describing a body part. So that's why on television they say on network television they say jackass instead of asshole. It's okay. The FCC, the FCC is weird about that. So maybe fifty cents or a quarter. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, 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 go, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, other things that are going on in the Trump administration. So you know, I don't, I don't want to start a list. I'll just give that one example. But he has a really. If you, if you start a list, would be here for a long time. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. So Mariana, go ahead. Yeah, I don't see what's entertaining about Carlos Swinton anyway, because all it, He's a shouty man on the internet. What's entertaining about that? He's a shock jock. There's That's a the lot of yeah. That want um, to, I guess, see that anger justified by somebody. Yeah, like it reaffirms. Yeah, it reaffirms a lot of their like personal held beliefs or in and ignorant beliefs that like no, you're not. There's nothing wrong with you being a white cis young male and something like that. It's the everyone else is oppressing you. You are oppressing that kind of bullshit. Okay, I added dollars to the jar. Everyone, let's swear some more so we can fill up that tip jar, that swear jar, and give it to charity. Kids today, I don't know you and your mouths. <laughs> Cultural Marxism thing. Well, it was invented by the actual literal Nazis, and they called it Kultur Bolshevismus, and they meant Jews. So, um, I don't know if the people realize its anti-Semitic roots, but I'll just play uh, Schrödinger's douchebag here and say everyone who uses cultural Marxist is probably an anti-Semite. Hmm. So I think they're, re they're reappropriating it. I'm not sure. I would probably go with they're at least very ignorant. Yeah, I agree to that. Yeah, I think you have to do a discount for American ignorance of European anything. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Especially. Yes. Not even just European anything. You could just put anything there. <laughs> just young, just young. Yeah, young people not... don't know about history. If it's like happened before they were born, it's just all completely nebulous and stuff like that. And unfortunately, yeah. many people mm -hmm. are not interested in learning about history or learning about anything. And that's the problem. We're not a bright people. As a species, we are. <laughs> Things yeah, are as, as, an, as, a na as a nation. And if we can't get our facts right and we can't list our sources, we shouldn't take those claims seriously. Let's be skeptical. 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 I think it's better. That's a yes, really skeptical. Skeptical. You, you must excommunicate yourselves. All right. So I'll do a last call. Are there any points on your notes, Tom, that you wanted to bring up that you haven't had a chance yet, or any other one, uh, Matthew? If you want to, maybe I can kick it over for any closing thoughts from you about how. I like, I like to hear from Matthew. He's been quiet. Oh. 
Oh, uh, maybe he went away from his computer. <laughs> <laughs> Busted. <laughs> oh, he, he's 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 swearing. It's uh, and he's he's broke. I see. I understand that. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> yeah. To end on, on a profanity. And by the way, I'm um, sorry, before I, I say anything, um, Matthew said that he just didn't have much to add and that he uh, he's appreciates everybody else's points. He's just a silent listener in our hangout. He's the lurker. The lurker. Well, that way he doesn't have to add to the uh, swear jar for swearing. Fuck. There I go again. <laughs> no reason to. Oh, so much for monetizing this video. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, like that was you were gonna do that? <laughs> oh, right. that, would, that would have been. Uh... But we're well, talking about politics. Politics is not monetizable on YouTube, just in general. I get you know my Patreon Hangout announcement video got demonetized as not being user friendly. I just think that they do it randomly. I in the middle of the live. I don't. Uh, there you, you go. Can you guys hear hey, my hey, typing hey. when I type? Uh, Sorry. no. Let me be a little bit. I'll okay. mute you if it's a problem. Hey guys, we're really professional. <laughs> we should. <have> yeah. <laughs> we were in the middle of a point about how Americans just absolutely mangle French words in particular. Uh, although I have to talk about the Harvey Weinstein pronunciation too, if we're on this topic. Uh, but yeah, some random geek was gonna come back with a, a comment. So the comment that I had made was um, one particularly awful pronunciation that Americans have for anyone who studies and loves the French language is, <clears throat> sorry, the phrase Notre Dame. It's just so awful. Oh, it's I Notre didn't even Dame. understand you. You were saying, you were saying that. Oh my Notre, Dame. Notre Dame. Notre Dame. No, Notre Dame. Notre Dame. <laughs> Notre Dame. The, to, to be fair, the R's in French are really a pain in the butt when you're not used to See, in my mind, if it's, yeah, it's, see, in my mind, if someone says Notre Dame, I think they're talking about the Fighting Irish College. But if right. someone is trying to talk about that famous cathedral in, like, wherever it is in France, uh, I would say, no, no, that's pronounced Notre Dame. Mm -hmm. I at least Paris. know that part. It's in Paris, honey. It's not where, wherever in France. <laughs> well, I'm American, of course. You're Maybe. going, you're going to, to offend Parisians because they think they're the, the center of the world, of the mm -hmm. universe, yeah. sorry. He is American. He did get the right country. So you have to give him points for extra yeah, American true. geography points. <laughs> I saw a video of a concert of, of them where they literally came come out on stage uh, from a giant vagina that, that is on the stage. <laughs> it's pretty amazing. That's the cool <laughs> show right there. How is Julie entering the show? Plus, is fly in onto the stage or something like that? Nah, that's tame or something like that. Uh, come up from above? Nah, no, that's tame. What if we come out of a giant vagina? <laughs> That's it's like right out of this is silent spinal tap. I wonder <laughs> who thought of that. <laughs> exactly. Oh, they all did. I'm pretty sure that they are pretty uh, crazy in the good sense of the word. Mm -hmm. Well, um, it's not really to me. The intriguing question is not necessarily the kind of person who came up with it. It was the kind of people who agreed to it. <laughs> well, that's <laughs> the real suspicious types. Because anyone can have a crazy idea, just sort of a mad sort of, hey, let's come out of a vagina. But other people have to go, yeah, no, seriously, that would be a good idea. It was those people. They're to blame. And then you have to create the prop. You got to like get the special kind of like a flush tone yeah. thing, like the same kind of material that you use for sex toys and stuff like that. You got to <laughs> build the frame and stuff like that. You got to like build the scaffolding for that. You got to, so I architect, I architect had to figure yeah. out how to build a the architects vagina. Were like what the hell are we doing this for while they were doing it? <laughs> I got hired up to build a big They're like, shop. really? Yeah. They're paying me scale. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Who the I'll build you a vagina. I'll build you a taint. Whatever you want, man. I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> there is an art piece of a giant ass, so it's like not too far. But... Yeah. Well, it, uh, it hasn't made its way to France, sadly, not to the mainstream, anyways. Well, um, yeah, you'll get, you'll be very cold. Find it on YouTube. Yeah, maybe on the streaming services too. 
stop trying to get us to do s s illegal stuff. Uh, <laughs> random it is questionable legality. Not <laughs> uh, and John Lester, it will, uh, head of Pixar, essentially, it be, uh, did it got it be executive producer for the doves of like all those things. So that's where, for like Hollywood's Council, you got A list actors like Billy Crystal in the dove and Christian Bale in the dove and so like that. And they went through a lot of effort to just match words and match flip flats and stuff like that. And that's something that American uh, anime studios like or anime companies like uh, Sentai Filmworks and Foundation also try to do. But you don't have to match lip flaps a hundred percent because the Japanese don't do that anyway. And so, yeah. I don't know how to follow on from that. Yeah. <laughs> this is going to be an anime hangout then because I can't stop talking about anime. I'm sorry, but it's smart art. So, we're, and we're just here chilling out. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was going to ask Tom, what's up with the Packers? Oh, maybe Tom left. <laughs> You're maybe muted, Tom. Uh, by the way. Maybe he's like a AFK or B BRB. Yeah. Uh, oh, you no, you bought him to chat. death with your. <laughs> Tough offer. And it's, it's not a patch on uh, Disney, you know, on Pixar versus, you know, <laughs> and, and, and France uh, and the dubbing in French is crap and Netflix is crap in Europe. And, but maybe not in Britain uh, because. Because they speak English like a civilized person. <laughs> they speak real English, as Ben Logan would say. Yeah, derivative. So, yeah, so I was going to ask for my Packer update, Tom. Um, they're playing in 15 minutes. Yeah, oh, I think. Okay. I think. I don't know. I don't know for sure. But don't worry about it because I, uh, I'm not. Uh, I'll go as long as we go. Okay. But uh, so far, the uh, Packers have, let's see, they played five games in the regular season, one, four. And That's pretty good. Three. You beat my Seahawks, that, too. The one that, yeah. Oh, we, we did, okay. That was an old scoring game. But the, um, uh, against the Cowboys, we, uh, Oh, you would have loved that. I think if you like football at all, I think you like football. Uh, yeah, Packer football, at least. And the, everybody uh, likes Packer football. Well, you got to. It's America's team. Fuck the exactly. fuck the Cowboys. <laughs> uh, I, you know, I never understood how the how the cowgirls got to be such a uh, inflated ego team. Yes, don't care. But part of the reason why I just prefer dubs over subs generally is because I'm on my phone playing like my games and stuff like that. And so I kind of like I prefer to like not have to pay attention to the screen so much when I'm watching subtitles once and just be on my phone as well as watching anime because I multitask like that. And I can't do that on subtitles as well. Or if I do do that, I just know I'm just going to be missing a lot. Learn and the language, you lazy fuck. <laughs> well, why everybody else uses english don't they <laughs> yeah. but to bring together uh swearing in the packers um and, and kind of tying things <laughs> together <laughs> All right. Um, what a segue. I'm on board. Steve Shives, you, yeah. Steve Shives, you should learn from Christy Winters. Yes, you should. There's, you guys know the Tim Minchin, the Pope song? Fuck yep. the motherfucker. Fuck the motherfucker. Fuck the motherfucker. Mm -hmm. He's a total motherfucker. Fuck the motherfucker. I don't know it, but I like it. Yeah, he's like, um, fuck the motherfucking, fucking fuck the motherfucker, fuck the motherfucking, fuck the motherfucking pope. But yeah. <laughs> what that, I want to do first is, time I heard that was it was it was beautiful. I was thinking, wait, I don't know what this, what is oh the pope? <laughs> Boy, right. that's going to get some people's knickers in a twist. Yeah, well, this was under Benedict when it was all about the the sex scandal. But I always wanted to like we couldn't do it in the Packers, not in the family section, but doing muck, um, fuck the motherfucking, fuck the motherfucking bears. You know? bears like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, I live up so in in my head. I replace Pope with bears. Story about about um, about uh, why Iowa doesn't have a, a NFL team. 
No. No. You want me to tell you? Yeah. Sure. <laughs> we, we're walking into it, so we, sure, go ahead. Is yeah. this like two, three guys walk into a bar kind of story? Uh, uh, I'll let you decide. <laughs> uh, they won't let they won't let Iowa have an NFL team because if Iowa gets one, Minnesota's going to want one. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, that's also along the lines of um, of the Vikings talking about uh, all the times they've been to the Super Bowl, and um, without mentioning without them mentioning, although we always do. They never won once. <laughs> so they keep saying, we're a great team. We've been to the Super Bowl. And I'm thinking, yeah, well, so have we. And we won all but one of the times. <laughs> we won the first two and uh, two more. Yep. I feel so European right now. <laughs> yeah. This show is basically we're just moving through and alienating each of you one by one. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Alienating the non-artists, anime, non-anime, uh, and the non-Paka fans among us. So everyone should feel disillusioned and slightly uncomfortable by the end of the hangout. That's really my goal. Yeah, I feel <laughs> comfortable. I don't. I didn't feel disillusioned at all. I get to talk oh, about my favorite thing. So you got. I don't know. <laughs> uh, it, um, I, I'm a geek. So and this baguette. Shut up. <laughs> I, I just, I, I was just gonna say, I love the fact that, like, in last hangout, you, uh, Chrissy Winters kind of uh, like uh, mentioned that, like, well, this hangout's gonna get like a restricted uh, viewpoint or something like that because of all the swearing and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah then this hangout is like Chrissy to say, "Fuck the motherfuckers, fuck, fuck the motherfucker, <laughs> fuck the motherfucker, he's a total motherfucker, fuck the motherfucker." Uh, yeah, I, I remember I, I was listening to a, 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 a very proper british woman talking about uh her life as a child and how they had uh i don't know if it was hedge i think it was hedgehogs and uh, just you know and just reminiscing about her childhood and about these love you know about these little hedgehogs and how they kind of were pests and she said uh we used to call them the c word only she said that and, you know, coming out of this very proper British woman, and she said, we should probably call them something else. <laughs> <laughs> and I was thinking, you just said it, you just said it, lady. <laughs> and it was beautiful. It was, it was so, it was and so. now I'm imagining Maggie Smith singing it. Yeah. <laughs> and it's wonderful. Yes. There's actually, yeah, um, yeah. there's. Tell you I can imagine the queen <laughs> saying, wouldn't it be fun to see the queen say something like that? <laughs> Kate Blanchett. Oh, fuck. The Kate queen Blanchett. is not really a fun person. No, she, I think she seems pretty dull. But Kate Blanchett was on inside the actor's studio, and they asked what their favorite swear word is, and hers was, I'll just say it, I mean, everyone else has been very polite, but cunt. Yeah. Like, I, I love it. Say it. It's a great it's word. And yeah, I know that, it's a like, great so, word. It's a great body part. There was a his, uh, program on, I want to say it was on BBC 3 or 4, but it was the history of the C word. And I think I might have mentioned this in a hangout before, but there used to be a place in London where the hot prostitutes would market their wares, shall we say? Grope, grope lane. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it was cunt grope, cunt grope lane. So, I mean, yep. the word has been in the language for a long time. And I think, you know, when I see it, especially when I see it used in Europe, it's not used toward women. It's very rare. Usually, like right. if I see somebody insulting, they'll call them a bint or a mouthy cow or something like that. But, yeah. but that word is more, it's more of an adjective. Um, or not an adjective, it is a noun. But for instance, uh, there was an Australian guy, you know, go figure, who uh, was at a conference and he was on the panel with another esteemed academic. He himself was like a professor or something. He was hosting the panel and they were going, you know, they had it. It was a very fun time. And afterwards, he said, oh, I just want to tell you, I think you're a really funny cunt. I had a really lovely time talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> and he said oh. he went away not thinking about this. And he got an email from the guy two weeks later just saying, I can't believe you called me that. And he just like went, he was very American about it and just completely <laughs> went off. And he's telling the story in a British restaurant with a bunch of Brits. They're like, oh, yeah, you know, we know. Um, but yeah, I have to say that when I hear Brits use that word, it's more like along the lines of dick or asshole. Yeah. 
Right. It's in that vein of words. Yeah, and there's the accent too with the Brits. Yeah. 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 They don't say oh, like can't, the they say can't. <laughs> <laughs> they have a way of kind of throwing it in there. I um, love it. I find it pretty funny though. I, uh, I we used have come to be full offended circle. by it, but... We start the hangout mentioning how Rammstein, the band, comes out on stage yes, at a concert vagina. through a giant <laughs> vagina, all. and now See? we end at the top of the hour with talk. Yep, exactly. <laughs> it's 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 all hangs together. It's all one universe. That's a it's, meme I, I have. It says, uh, <laughs> "I'd call you a cunt, but you don't have the depth <laughs> or the warmth." <laughs> And I like that pretty much because yeah. it's a compliment, damn exactly. it. <laughs> exactly. Chrissy, I see, not gonna like this hangout. I'm sorry, Chrissy. No, no, she's not. No, I was no. thinking about her. Thinking no, about I'm her. sorry, Chrissy. I'm sorry. I know, and I respect her. I just respectfully disagree because, in part, derived from my experiences living abroad. And when I hear Kevin say it, I don't think he, there's no misogyny behind that. It's right. again, it's it's mm -hmm. all about the the context. We look at how the word "gay" was used in the 1910s and 1920s. It's very different. And I'm not saying that people don't find the word "cunt" offensive, and I I get that. And definitely around American people i don't use that word mm -hmm. but in conversation if it was appropriate and the other thing is that is just a great word to say <laughs> yeah the way you can like the the hard sound and then the kind of guttural uh and then the nt at the end it just rolls off your tongue it's a nice punctuation like, like the word mm -hmm. fuck you know, you to punctuate. <laughs> dude i am as drunk as fuck you know, like I, just, I only have one drink. I should have like joined you. I should have just go back to the kitchen to get more. I, next time, I'll have a bottle next to my feet. There you go, shots. Yes, the one that should not be main, named. Yeah, cunt of Swindon. Um, so, <laughs> I'm really glad we don't have a tip jar because I'm out of money this month. <laughs> you know, a swear jar. Uh, that would be. Uh, no, that was be, me and the fucking motherfucker song. Yes. Well, I yeah, I can uh, I can cool. send you some mark some marmite if you want if you <laughs> next time you're running out. No, I'm I I can get it, uh, and I can I obviously can do without it. It's just a matter of it's just a matter of. Uh, I'll shut up and thank the lady, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> Don't deny free marmite. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with you? A nice lady. <laughs> He's saying, he's telling you, I will send you food, and you say, no, I could. <laughs> Why was nice with you? Thank you, nice lady. There. <laughs> <laughs> that was that's so hard. Yes, that was hard. I'm sorry. Well, I, I told you I'm an asshole. It's 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 hard for me to do, to do the right thing. But don't worry. Yeah. You can blame the patriarchal system that we have on that. I have, I have well, it's that, and I have no social graces. So it's <laughs> it's sort of a combination of all these horrible things that that create a perfect storm of uh, assholery, assholery, <laughs> inept assholery. Because I'm not even all that good at being an asshole. An asshole. Yeah, you know, I, 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 we I like know to you, do. Tom. We know who you really are. <laughs> so I'm an, I'm an, I'm an, I'm trying to do the macho thing. <laughs> so I'm an yeah. actual asshole. Okay, good. And I'm a geek, so that's no, just given as well. Yeah. <laughs> you're not a geek. You're a nerd. <laughs> you're, you're <laughs> just saying I'm not a geek. Well, okay, I'm, I'm not going to. Yeah, you're both. You're both. Well. both. Okay. <laughs> it's, uh, I was about to say, listen, you, you just heard me talk about subs versus dubs and animes and how if you watch Naughty and Secret Blue Water, skip these episodes, but watch these episodes and so on and so forth. So how Don't go again at it, please. <laughs> hey, let people have their own identity. Let them identify who they are themselves. No, I'll let, accept nerd, use, though. I'll use, probably accept nerd yeah. and dork. Use, this use, is use their pronouns. Use their pronouns <laughs> and their and their identifiers. Yes, but I, yeah, all, I'm a geek. I'm a nerd too. But my name is some random geek. It's a yeah. geek. Yeah, but we're all, yeah, right. So we're all social justice warriors here. So we're you know we're all <laughs> we're all politically correct, and we hate we hate hurting people's feelings. 
that's how you can be a geek about anything, even like music, even by movies, even about traditionally like non-geek things. Sports. There are definitely sports geeks. Because look at fantasy sports. What the hell is fantasy sports? People obsessing over a spreadsheet of numbers. How is that not geek and so, nerdy? Anything, really. Yeah. Exactly. You can be nerdy about it. But for me, like the geek is someone who like a D and D geek is somebody mm -hmm. who just like goes overboard and they get all the books and they have all the dice and they have they start getting metal like figures and you know, getting the t shirts and like they're just like a, they're a D and D geek. Sword, and swords in the corner and things like that. <laughs> yeah. uh, yeah. So, I actually do have a sword in the corner. That so, <laughs> that, that's what I was. That's what I was referring to. I, I was trying to figure out for the last, the last two or three uh, hangouts. I was trying to figure it out because it looks like a shotgun. <laughs> I mean, no, I, it, look, it looks like some kind of big, you know, shotgun sort of thing. Uh, but then I thought, well, that, he probably wouldn't have that, but he probably would have swords because he's an anime geek. <laughs> yeah. uh, so. No, actually, I my see dad actually. Actually, my you dad teaches. Have to get it out like now. Okay, guys, hold on. Uh, I'm not gonna. I'm gonna take off my headphones. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, that took absolutely no arm twisting whatsoever. <laughs> Those leggings are just out of this world. I love them. <laughs> oh, weaponry! You have weaponry by your desk too. So do I. Put those all the way there. And above, above. I just realized. I probably should have muted myself as I did that. So, so this thing is a bow staff, just a standard like six foot bow staff. I got this because I wanted at a uh, picnic price. My dad uh, teaches at uh, a karate school, a mixed martial arts school, and so they had a picnic, and this is one of the raffle prices, and I won this as a raffle. Is that so made out of ash? I think so. It's pre it's from the karate school. They bought it from like a supplier or something like that. So I imagine, I imagine it's made. It's made in China. There's that. So there's that, and okay. so I think it's made of this. I had to like uh, confirm that. Yeah. Uh, that reminds me of uh, the episode with Bugs Bunny and Donald Duck when they were doing Robin Hood and they were doing their, their quarter staff. Yeah. And Donald goes, "Oh, it's actually a buck and a quarter quarter staff, but don't tell him yep. that." <laughs> <laughs> and then these. A size again. This was yeah. actually at the Christmas dinner. Uh, I actually want a pair of children uh, size size, uh, but my dad traded them in for adult size, and these are yep, real size, real metal. And I have not done anything with them actually. I've not taken the karate class and stuff like that. But yeah, this way I can be like Raphael, or I can just like make three exact holes in the ground as these sides were made to do. Hello, lonely wolf. So that's what you use at Thanksgiving to hold bird down Hi. while you carve it. Hi, Hi lonely wolf. I, I actually have a little, slightly allergic to turkey, so we don't have turkey at my house in Thanksgiving. Oh, corn? <laughs> Will you spear uh, the corn? Beef, roast beef. Oh, okay. Oh, roast beef. <laughs> it's killing the corn. Like the who's in Whoville, roast beef. Yes, the roast beef. Uh, yes, I should bring the size to do that. And this, again, from the same cross school, this is a practice katana. So, yeah, just like. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Just plastic. Now the other sort. This one I actually bought at like the summer festival, uh, cornucopia days and something like that, a booth, and I tied it. And so I'm gonna have to untie it. So talk yeah, about no, don't, yourself. Don't untie it. You you're gonna have a hard time to tie it back. No. Yeah, I think I'm good with knots. I was in the Boy Scouts, the Cub Scouts. So or I would just like. Yeah, just I stand there. by my statement, though. You such a Let's let a lonely wolf talk for a bit since they yeah. just arrived. Hello, lonely wolf. Are you there? Or not? I'm here. Oh, okay. I'm on now. Uh, oh, no. it's, it's a little scratchy, but it's fine. Good to a see you. How are you doing? Okay. As long as you see me. Oh, I'm, yeah, I'm doing okay. Just like a bit a bit under the weather. Uh, oh, that's going right. around. Like, everybody else, everybody seems to be, except that geek guy, seems to be either coming out of under or going the into yeah. uh, the weather. Change of seasons. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty that. sure even when he's under the weather, he's hyperactive. 
active like that? Uh, for me, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm lucky because yesterday I did a five kilometer uh, jog and so in like 45 minutes. And so, yeah, lucky me. Yeah. That just means that like eventually I'll get sick too because my coworkers Good. are sick too. Good. Good. You, you, want, you want to be part of the crowd. You privileged <laughs> fuck. <laughs> can, can we wrap up the sword show? Because we you made all that effort to get it out. So, I yeah. So I bought this out of the, like a just a booth at a like a copia kind of event in the city, and I it had a knob, but it fell off and something like that. It's just like the, just a guy something like that. And mm -hmm. yeah, it's a real metal, but like it's not. It's dull. It's really dull. It's mm -hmm. it's that's. Is it sword regular sword steel or is it just pot metal stuff? Pot metal. Uh, I would not know. I would not know. Uh, yeah. But just like how, is it, yeah, but just remember, people, when in like the Lord of Rings, where you see hear that, shh, yeah, yeah. It, it's leather. It's the the sheath is supposed to be leather because you yeah. hear that. That's like metal and metal. You don't want to scratch up your sword. <laughs> That's Hollywood magic. They have well, actually. Back Actually, uh, really good um, sheaths uh, are a lot of times will have a, a, a wood uh, wood liner inside, and they will make a noise similar to that. Not the not the ringing metal uh, metal thing, right. but uh, although sometimes when you have the there, there's a boss around the top of the uh, sheath that could that could do it too. But yeah, you don't want to have a lot of metal around in the, uh, the edge of the blade. What I was thinking is what you ought to get for the end of that, from the top of that, mm -hmm. is a five-speed gear shift uh, knob. A BMW. Yeah. Um, you, you could drive, so you can, you know, you can <laughs> shift gears and you're, oh, wait a minute, I got to, <laughs> I, I was in the attack, now I got to shift to the reverse. And, <laughs> I'm going to actually use this for fighting. It's just kind of like a prop sword, essentially. I I have to like actually sharpen it to use it if I want to use it. It's also not balanced up the hilt. It's kind of like balanced like here or something like that. So yeah. So yeah, that's my sword. Cool. Well, I'm a nerd. I think I might be a crochet nerd. <laughs> yeah. Or crochet that's, that's geek. Bizarre, like but... you collect patterns and do you sort of like look longingly at other sort of you know yarns and needles and things? Is it like a geek? Yeah, because you look at um yeah, because you look at certain patterns and then um you always you always end up like playing it like you you're in the middle of one project and you think, Oh, like oh, I wanna do that thing, but you think no, you gotta finish the project you're on. <laughs> yeah, I know yeah. that feeling. I have a yarn ball tattooed on my arm, I say. Yeah, yeah. Really, a, yeah, a metal, metal one, metal yarn ball. I like it. <laughs> yeah, and then and then you go to look for the like crochet, the humor on. Um, like you got to look for memes, but it's like any hobby, just to like, because it's funny. It's got like the crochet. They got a hundred. They're fantastic. It's like the um, the rule is like you never discuss the size of your yarn stash in civilized. So, like, a, lady should, a lady should never discuss the size of her yarn stash. <laughs> I showed my my yarn stash last time I made a video on Facebook. <laughs> I did see that, yeah, I did see that too. <laughs> the rules. Crochet the memes. Ones. I learned something new today. Thank you, Lonely Wolf. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and then like you take it up and it's like, you know, I've got 99, 99 problems, but a stitch ain't one of them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my mom and my stepsister also grow no not just sisters no sister-in-law no, they both do crochet so yeah they'll probably like that joke <laughs> did you say you were crocheting it's almost two hours yeah yeah we're gonna wrap up here i think but uh, since lonely wolf showed up i didn't want to like cut it off five minutes after he turned up Oh, no. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> so I was like, cause my contribution is pretty limited. Yeah, but we appreciate your presence. Oh, I yeah, I sure do. <laughs> Cheer so you up from wolf. the various parts of the world we're in. Lonely wolf crochet yeah. memes. That's that's a thing. <laughs> yeah, I, well, I would... anything with a meme is a thing. <laughs> fair enough. Just like with like Rule Thirty Four and porn, there's like a porn for everything. Crochet yeah. porn. 
<laughs> that would oh god i gotta look that up now <laughs> i don't know if there's crochet porn but there's definitely yarn porn <laughs> i would imagine there would be if, if, if by porn you mean something you know uh, okay I'm done. And who's going to go to Pornhub and look up crochet porn and see what the results are? <laughs> I was going to just Google it and was safe search off. And it's like it, with the different corners of the internet with DeviantArt or like Tumblr or other places like that. It, it, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I was people know about like again, I'm going to bring back to anime. People know about technical porn. Uh, but uh, and that's the so, oh, Ten you don't know about porn. Tentacle, tentacle porn, porn. tentacle no. hentai. That's the that's no. uh, only kind of porn I'm bothered to watch in this sphere. <laughs> tentacle porn, I, I have a thing for tentacles. This, so, uh, okay, well, uh, <laughs> this sounds well, weird. <laughs> that I'm, so, I'm, that's do you I'm a little bit scared. It's Japanese, of course, it's. Okay, so the in Japan, uh, the laws in Japan is still on the books today, and still they have to follow it. You cannot show the depiction of a male genitalia or female genitalia. It has to be blank out or mosaic out, even in adult products, in adult videos or adult games or adult books and stuff like that. They have to blank it out, and so because of that strict law, uh, one uh, several theories and stuff like that, but like I. I heard I haven't confirmed this one artist decided to think that's stupid and protest that and doing so by drawing tentacles. tentacles. And so yeah, so it's a legal loophole. You don't have to you have to do mosaic out or blank out the vagina, but the tentacle, you don't have to. And so and and also in Japan in like the subculture of porn there and stuff like that, if there's a market for it, uh, they'll create it and people will buy it. And so there is a market for tentacle porn and tentacle hentai also has been around for a while and some of it has come to the United States. Thank you, Media Blasters, the fine preparer of porn. And and so now, yeah, people know about it. It's it, most people who are in that savvy know about tentacle porn. What can still freak some people out is the existence of live action tentacle porn. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I just blew you guys' brains. Uh, yes, I don't okay. know that that's a kind of orgasm ring to it. Live action tentacle porn. Through my video uh, uh, scrolling, I have found a video. It was fake plastic tentacle space tentacle props that the woman was had to fillet. And so I was like, okay, I'm done. But yeah, there's live action tentacle porn. And some of it has actually made the United States. Because another thing that the what Japan does is that when is something is popular that originally was animated, Speed Racer, Giver, Crasher Sin, um, uh, Attack on Titan. Bomb. Yeah, they will make a live action version of it. And so there is a live action version of this series, La Blue Girl. I only seen one episode of La Blue Girl, the animated one, and it's the most effed up thing, fucked up thing I've ever seen. And it's like, I don't want to watch it anymore. Yeah, there's a live action version of that too, because La Blue Girl <laughs> was popular in Japan. And it's also available in the United States. There might be some copies still around because, again, Media Blasters, a fine purveyor of porn. There's something very Lovecraftian about mm -hmm. tentacle porn. Yeah. Uh, That's true. It's mostly yeah. super funny, to be honest. But like I yeah, thought, someone's... furries was kind of like okay, I can handle furries. That's a that's a that's a thing. That's fine, you know. But well, furries but are cuddleable just... too. They're they're lovely. You can hug them. They're 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 so like full body stuffed animals in a way. Right, right. Like I, I, I'm not going to go there, but I can see that, you know. But yeah. I think it's just because I have, uh, I've got, I haven't seen it myself, and I'm picturing horrible octopi, slimy, sucker-filled things. That's no, space because monsters. we just see the tentacles. Okay, there's, there's, you don't see the monster actually. It's, it's Sometimes implied that it's a monster. Okay, I just think people are weird. Some people. Yeah. Are weird. <laughs> yeah. No. What it's, people it's like to totally be weird? weird. Yeah, Japanese are especially weird. It's, I, I should but it's weird funny, I think. The Japanese and the Germans are, are interesting in their proclivities. <laughs> yes. And I'm not going to really judge anyone if they're really I've heard. I have no idea. 
<laughs> yeah, well, uh, like, I'm not gonna judge like, anyone too much. As long as they're not hearing anyone, sorry, Lone Lou Wolf, you can go. Yeah, I as talk long over. as no one is uh, accusing you. Yeah, because like the Jaffa, because I've lived there for a year. Like um, this theme park, like it only came a thing like I don't know, maybe a year ago or something like that. But it's like, it's like a hot tub amusement park. So it's like the you sit in these little roller coaster carriages and the and they're little like hot tubs. It's like <laughs> bathtubs. Huh. And so, you, like, you're taking a bath and then going on a roller coaster ride at the same time. Why? <laughs> because it can. Yeah, exactly. Jesus. I'm naturally free. I probably want to go to that theme park now if I ever visit Japan. Another place I want to go to if I visit Japan, the Studio Ghibli uh, Park. They have a full size to scale like robot from Castle in the Sky, Laputa. I want to see that. Robot. Well, I went to the. I went to the. Robots. I went to the. New I went to a noodle museum when I was there. It was mm, that's it was cool. Interesting. Yeah. I went the to the Phallus Museum in Reykjavik. No, actually, I didn't. I just walked along outside of it. But that exists. That's a thing. The Phallus Phallus museum. museum. Oh yeah. yeah I've never yeah, just. Uh, museums for anything on there. I would go see that. Yeah, I'll be fascinated by that too. I mean, it's anatomy. Uh, uh, more, more I about... think it's mostly art. That too. But... Yeah. Like and an art, like a giant has been represented in art for millennia. <laughs> if there's a phallus museum, there should be a giant vagina museum as well, because we talked about vaginas a lot on this uh, hangout already. We need to ask Reimstein to make one. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they save that well, prop. And on that, we've tied in our earlier conversations about art and oh my God. <laughs> So I think this is a, a nice way to wrap it up um, because we've been going for two hours and three minutes. So that's a, that's a goodly long, goodly long hangout. For the 11 viewers, what are you guys doing listening to us natter on? Seriously, just like go, go do an audio book uh, or something. Um, they're waiting for the yeah. Japanese porn. No, no, we appreciate you. We thank you for being here. Yeah, they're here for the tentacles, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, for... Those of you in the audience who stuck it out, thank you so much for your time and attention. I have been Christy. You have been awesome. And now it's time to say goodbye for me and my guests. So bye for me and guests. Say goodbye. Goodbye, goodbye everyone. Bye. <laughs> but uh, today I decided to like, have the logs out and so on like that. And that's for the costume I am wearing, which I'm going to like, show right now. Easy. If you know of DC, <laughs> I, am, I am Aquaman, but <laughs> it's because it goes with the awesome lady. <laughs> wow. I need those leggings in my life. I'm not going to be the one to talk about hair. <laughs> that's, that, that, that's, that's not going to be my forte. Let's get it colored in, but so I decided to replace it with the monocle so people knew that. I'm still a wolf, but um, I don't get mistaken for a raccoon. <laughs> <laughs> Monocle smile! <laughs> That's uh, so, very chic. Go ahead. Grandma, Grandma, what a big <laughs> eye you have. <laughs> <laughs> the better to sort of see you with. Yeah. If you stand on one side. <laughs> and you just go for one glue line and you see you get some hot nuts uh you know hot roasted nuts there at the market and i mean <laughs> Winter likes hot nuts <laughs> yeah i like my nuts hot and my more my my wine glowing yeah gluing is that uh, speaking of egg nuts i have my own west free for egg nuts so you take your glass and then you start with yeah whiskey pour the whiskey and you drink the whiskey. <laughs> That's my version of eggnog. Huh. As, my... as 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 shared by um, uh, uh, Stephen Colbert on the Late Show. That's the only way I can drink eggnog. I'm allergic to eggs. <laughs> so is my that brother? Vegan? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, vegan eggnog <laughs> with wild turkey. <laughs> that uh, this my, is my this brother is a paid promotion. I've only had him for about um so it's like um so I named him after Dallas Cowboys, but his um 
because you're it's hard to pick a gender neutral name for a pet that you don't know because it's easy with a dog because you know um, <laughs> i heard like i heard tom moan audibly in pain when you said that <laughs> <laughs> My mom got a, a parrot a couple of years ago, a young parrot a couple of years ago. Um, and we, my sister and I believe it's to get back at us because it will way outlive her. Um, <laughs> neither one of us wants this thing. <laughs> it's, it's, she taught it to just scream all the time. <laughs> 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 How long do parrots live? What is their lifespan? Eighty, uh, I think. Yeah, about, yeah. yeah, about eighty. Oh. <laughs> it's not like mm. a cat who will have forgotten you a week later. So, <laughs> well, right after, if he doesn't, well, I think you, right after they, 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 he's done digesting you. <laughs> yeah, that's. What, I mean, you get, that's where I'm, I was <laughs> going. Well, to. Time, where's my next meal? <laughs> <laughs> a cat's not a pet, it's a roommate. <laughs> yeah, that's why I like cats, actually. Yeah, they're, they're very similar to me. <laughs> like, uh, the cockatiel species is one that can be taught to like speak or mimic human voice and stuff like that, but it takes a lot of training and stuff like that. I've seen some cockatiels that are able to do it, but we never train our cockatiel to do that. I'm scared, I'm scared of what mine's going to pick up if it learns how to talk. <laughs> <laughs> you just remind me. Okay, it's a joke where it's like a guy just like brought home a parrot from like the pet store, but unfortunately the parrot came from like a pirate ship or a sailor ship and so like that. So it will say every curse word under the sun. Girl Scout cookies. Hi, what do you want? Some Girl Scout cookies. F your Girl Scout cookies. And then after the parrot drove away nuns, drove away Jehovah's Witnesses, drove away Mormons, drove away salesmen from the door. Finally, the guy started like, listen, you're going to stop saying those curse words or else I'm going to put you in a cage. Oh, yeah, F your stupid cage. Start flying around, start like, chasing the bird, chasing the parrot, trying to like, catch it and stuff like that. And, and then finally, the parrot somehow got into the freezer. And the guy's like, okay, you got to close the freezer. Oh, yeah, I'm not letting you out until you stop cursing. Oh, fuck you and your stupid freezer and stuff like that. But then finally, the parrot starts went silent and stopped cursing. And the guy was afraid of the parrot being dead. So he opened the freezer and the parrot just like calmly walked up to his, to his shoulder and said, I'm very sorry for my behavior and what I've said. I'm going to change my behavior from now on and not curse anymore per your wishes. I just want to know one thing. What did the chicken do? <laughs> 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 oh, shit. What now does I that do? Now I want a parrot. <laughs> <laughs> After they uh, got into the whole, uh, how are you going to go? Do you know where you're going to go after you die? Uh, and don't you want to go to heaven? And I said, Hell no. Why would I want to go there? I would be bored shitless in an, in an hour and a half. Um, <laughs> I get tired of singing uh, for two hours, so <laughs> singing yeah. for eternity. <laughs> sure. Sure. Fucking harp and this goddamn cloud. And yeah. I think I think Mark Twain said it that like he will go for heaven for the accommodations, but he will go to hell for the company. And I learned uh, something new today, uh, other than the parrot thing, which I'm gonna, uh, which I think I'm gonna get a parrot now. <laughs> Because uh, you tell me to torture your descendants. <laughs> well, they're well, they're they're good. Well, I no hell no. I want to make a commitment to something that is going to be around for eighty years, and that uh, I will feel bad about leaving, so I will stay around until it dies. Ah, there you go. So I'll be I'll buy I'll be uh, you know into my hundred and fifties. <laughs> and um, and uh, probably tired of life by that time. And when the when the bird dies, I'll be so happy that fucking thing is gone. I can go. <laughs> okay, I'm there, I, I, I swore I swore for you, Leto. Yeah, are you are you please? Are you please? Yeah, now? we got the. <laughs> yes, of course. That's always the best. That's the highlight of every hangout. <laughs> 
It's, I'm gonna share Where's this from I? the. I'm gonna share uh, Joey Jojo in the live chat. You're you're awesome as always. Cause first thing you said is like, "Holy crap, Christy turned into Christmas lights." <laughs> <laughs> and another. I thing am the Charlie said, Brown Christmas. <laughs> okay, then he like, and then he asked, maybe this is why you void your bowels when you die because who wants to have to poop forever? Um, as much as I want. No, I don't, I don't, the, the liquid you use, how many, how much, how many milligrams oh, oh, oh. I'm per sorry. liter? Uh, Tom's using that for cooking oil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm deep frying everything in, in vape juice. That's less than right. Yeah, but like sure Americans really need to, to get on with the metric system. This is getting ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. my dad and I had this conversation today. Yeah. Um, because I, really, I already had to, to learn your stupid language, and now I have to learn your stupid uh, system for measurements to talk with people. So your Fahrenheit scale we is got them from so stupid. Mm -hmm. We we got them from the UK and the UK doesn't even use it anymore. They use a metric. So yeah, yeah like literally the only. Yeah, yeah we use imperial measures. And we, yeah, we and, do. And, and we specifically said, fuck you to the Imperium. <laughs> He's a ruler. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're, I think uh, I think American slide just uh, like it was beaten into us of like the uh, rules of twelve inches and stuff like that and how the system works or like in Catholic school it's like that's not how you use the grammar. It was and beaten also, into us with a ruler. <laughs> um, American yes. football field is a hundred yards, right? So you get a sense of what a yard looks like based on mm -hmm. watching a lot of football. So you're I exposed have to it in that way. No idea what a yard is. Compared to uh, meters, oh, okay, I, it's well, three well, feet, isn't it? I know yes, a uh, mile yeah, is feet. a little bigger than a kilometer. A mile? Yeah, uh, it's, um, it's one point well, five k is about a five k is about three miles, right? Yes, a five k is about three point one miles. Yeah, and a mile is five thousand two hundred and eighty feet. Mm -hmm. For no damn so, reason. So yeah, almost almost uh, <laughs> yeah. one kilometer and sixty uh, six hundred meters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if, and if a French that... football, uh, a European football field is a hundred meters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think a, a meter is about thirty-six inches. It's a little longer than a yard. Yeah, um, so a football field, a football pitch, is slightly wider um, and longer than an American. Well, it's more wide and longer than an American football field because right. our pitch is narrower. It's thirty nine point thirty seven inches. Uh, Jojo, uh, 100 meters. Okay. Jojo okay. in the live chat says that a yard is exactly zero point nine one four four meters. So yeah, a yard is close about like nine tenths of a meter or so like that. Thank you, Jojo. You're awesome. Yeah, but every single one of the of your measurements is almost one of ours. Like <laughs> an inch is almost. <laughs> 2.5 centimeters is 2.54 uh, centimeters. Right. Um, a, a yard is almost 1.5 kilometer. It's always almost. Anytime somebody yeah. gives me trouble with this, I, or gives me a, what, why should we go to meters and stuff? I said, because I don't want to keep measuring stuff by some dead king's body parts. <laughs> Good <Yeah>. point. <laughs> We, ha we have an expert here on Australian uh, measurements. <laughs> yes. Yes, I don't, I, don't, I don't understand any other measurements. Like, um, it's kind of like, so everything's in tens and hundreds, thousands, and it's like, why doesn't everybody do it? <laughs> yeah. But I'm just, being, I'm just being snobby, though. Because, well, you're, you're being the majority. America is uh, America's being the snob. You know, we're, yeah. yeah. We're and we use the French of arrogance. <laughs> Leave us your uh, our arrogance, please. Yeah. It's all we have, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and cheese. <laughs> Interesting, because I think if I were to go, if I were to uh, go to to um, where do you live, Australia? 
<laughs> oh God, no, I'm no, that was me. That Austria, was me. Just, Australia, one of those A names. I, I just, no, I just, I just, I just, okay, um, we're gonna pull an age card. I, I had a senior moment. Uh, Is that better than American indifference to the rest of the world? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, Chris's loaf is amazing. <laughs> yeah. 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 All right, so open floor. What topics? I'm not going to lead things now. I'm going to chill because I want to relax. Um, <laughs> you guys want to talk about net neutrality? Have a good moan about that? Yes. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I think uh, Jonathan is is uh, about uh, on point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I almost want to throw my hat. Uh, it's like, oh my god, they pat, they reached. Oh, man, ah. Uh. You know, I, I was I was going to go for a Carlin reference with the you know the seven seven words you can't say on the radio. Um, and it's kind of it's kind of that. I think it's I think it's five words. No, uh, no, the evidence based, science, uh, science based, diversity, uh, transgender, transgender, and fetus. Yeah, yeah. Fetus is one, yeah, yeah. Why fetus? I don't understand. Like that's just, that's the one. Because they want to force baby. Oh, okay. They, they want to force people, people to say baby. Yeah. Oh, okay. Because yeah, because it, because people would have like a different image of like a fetus as opposed to a baby and stuff like that. Who would want to be but, medically accurate? Why would the CDC yeah, want to be medically medical accurate medical. in terms of the development of the baby across you know zygote, embryo, fetus to delivered infant? Yeah, why would we want to be medically accurate? Uh, uh, because we don't like what the medical sciences tell us and stuff like that. So th no, no, Let's this is a human lava. I'm sure they would <laughs> love it. <laughs> what do you think about this is actual censorship so i wonder if like this has only been like friday but has like the the free speech warriors the rationales like say anything you know, about they this? don't give a shit about that I, yeah that's true i think someone had screen capped uh, sargon's videos in the last week and he hasn't done a video on net neutrality yet so i think um, i'm trying to think if I've, I've seen anyone else I, I mean i don't really like you know troll their channels every single day to see what they're doing i usually go by what people retweet on twitter when they're mocking them oh yeah fair um, enough yeah yeah I saw, so that's good go ahead Tom. I, I saw uh uh somebody somebody put on facebook a, a tweet or a comment from in 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 miles chong yeah uh, uh, about that, and he said the only one that he thought was a little wonky was fetus, yeah, but the other ones were uh, were fine because they were only uh, political propaganda. And I'm thinking <laughs> science based, evidence based, that's propaganda. There's something wrong with this boy. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> well, there's a lot of things wrong with the Amazon. Yeah. 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 There's a lot of things wrong. Like, uh, I, I just I had a flash to the movie Raising Arizona. Uh, son, you got a penny on your head. <laughs> yeah, I flashed the Hank Hill talking about there's something wrong with that boy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this boy ain't right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Oh. This boy ain't right. Yeah. Oh yeah, but, like a uh, side note, like in the past hangout on Steve's hangout, we kind of mentioned so like Back to the Future and the old James Bond movies and stuff like that. Well, there were some attempted break in those movies and stuff like that. I, I guess we, it's a good thing we know better now. Oh, James Bond hits women. <laughs> yes. But I think Chris was trying to make a point. Sure. And then Tom. Oh no, I was just gonna. Say, I'm I'm blaming all of sexism and video games on Princess Peach. <laughs> Tom, did you have something to add to that? Uh, I don't remember. I, I well, no, two things. I, well, I guess two things. It was sort of a change, maybe in some ways. When I was younger, when I was the age you guys started playing video games, um, well, actually a little older when I was in college, um, I got into pinball machines mm. in bars and mostly well mostly in the bars but yeah so i got into pinball machines and i was pretty uh pretty uh 
I guess in some ways addicted to at least one or two of the games. Uh, sure plays a mean pinball. <laughs> dun, 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 yeah. Dun, dun, dun. yeah, I'm not deaf to my blind. That's probably my that was probably my shortfall there. Often <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. turn off and focus on your own dramas or the things that you care about. Because in all honesty, it's a lot of work to yeah. take on other people's problems. You know. Um, I mean, yeah, like go ahead, you finish. Okay, thanks. And uh, and and so you know, sometimes people can do that more at, at better times than others. But I think if you are in a position to do that in your life, and then you continue to turn off or to continue to other people, um, when presented with information, yeah, that's that's a that's a moral failing on your part, and it doesn't make you a bad person. It just means you could be a much better person. Yeah, I I had that. And Tom is a much better person. Yes, yes, Tom, you are a much better person now. Uh, but what's next? Burying dogs? <laughs> uh, more like, you know, thought. Not, I don't want to call Steve Bannon a thought leader, but a prominent, prominent figures <laughs> in politics. Because there is no thought. Right? <laughs> yourself safe. Because um, there are people that, if you're, for example, if you're asexual, there, there are people that are going to sit there and say, well, I don't know how you could be that way, blah, blah, blah. That's not natural. And it's like, <laughs> yeah, it is natural. <laughs> One of the things I used to say to people who would say, who would go on about um, gay sex or whatever, say, what do you do with the other 23 hours and 58 minutes of your, of your time? <laughs> You know, it takes a minute. Who told you that? <laughs> <laughs> but it's true. Like that othering is a reduction, you know. Reducing yeah. people down is is a form of, yeah, way to other them. Yeah. I mean, as a gig, I would say I have I have over a thousand video games. I spend this many hours on playing video games, watching anime, and people have said, get alive. It's like, what kind of life? I play with you guys. I have infinite lives. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but there's this expectation that, like, just because I'm trans, that and I'm I'm, I'm trans feminine, um, that I was um, interested in men, and that's I'm bisexual. So I mean, it's you know whatever. But half right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> 